30 seconds of praise just because God is faithful, just because he's a way maker, just because he's a healer, just because he's a sustainer. Whatever you need, that's what he is. Am I right about it? Come on, give somebody a high five. Say, God's about to do something right now. God, God's about to do something in the house right now. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. <laughs> we will rejoice and be glad in it. My rejoicing does not predicate it by a blessing that comes my way. I'm going to rejoice in the midst of my moment. I'm going to rejoice even when I'm sad. I'm going to rejoice even when things aren't going the way that I want them to go. Anybody can praise God when everything is going well, right? But I need the radical people in the house that even when things aren't going the way you want them to know, you still ain't going to let go of his hand. You still going to keep trusting him even when you can't trace him. Oh, come on, come on. I wish I had some people. My breast praise came when I was in a moment of wanting to throw in the towel. Has there ever been anybody in the house that ever wanted to throw in the towel? But by the grace of God right now, I dare you to praise God right now just because the devil didn't win. How? Just because the devil didn't win. Come on, I need some of you that are going through some tough times. I need you to praise God anyhow. Because when you praise God anyhow, you tell the devil what he's trying to do to break you. It's just going to make you. Oh, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the kind of God I serve. He may not come when I want him to come. But he's showing up right on time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Glory to God. If you would open up your Bible to 2 Kings chapter number 4, I promise not to have you long. But I believe that there is a spirit of revival in this place. I'm going to say that again. There is a spirit of revival in this place for those that want to be revived. Yeah. The word of God said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Every now and then, there ought to be an audible praise coming out of your mouth just because God is who he said he is. Yeah. So I believe that there's a revival spirit going on. There's some things going on in my life that I'm not quite understanding, but yet I'm trusting God in the middle of the process. Because I've noticed in the last few weeks, God has been assigning pastors that are mid-30s that are wanting some mentoring from me, and I'm trying to figure it out. And I always look at myself as being 30, and I guess I'm 60. So, so, so now I've done shifted, and I'm the old man of the crew. God, that sounds bad, doesn't it? Every pastor that I've kind of ministered to in the last two months have been in the mid-30s. And they was wanting some stuff that I didn't even know that I had to give them. Look at Josh. All right, buddy. Good to see you this morning. Amen. God is faithful and he's worthy to be praised. Sometimes God will take you out of your comfort zone to put you in a place of uncomfortability in order to grow you. I'm going to say that one more time for the people in the back. Sometime God is going to take you out of comfortability and put you into a place of uncomfortability so that you can grow. I'm going to say that a third time. Sometimes God will take you out of comfortability and put you in uncomfortability in order that you might grow. And you don't even know what's inside of you until you get into a place that you don't even know how you got there. Have you ever been into a place that you don't even know how you got there? but yet you thank God that you got there. I don't know how I got there, but thank God, by the grace of God, I am there. Second Kings chapter number four, if you'll be with me. I need you to follow me because I'm probably going to take you to a place that you don't even know where you're going because guess what? I don't even know where I'm going. But I'm going somewhere. Say, he's going somewhere. Second Kings chapter number four. I always like scriptures that start off with the very first word, and the very first word of Second Kings chapter four is now. now. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to become slaves. 
And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Look at your name and say, He'll use what you got. Oh, somebody better shout right there. See, y'all waiting on some bait miracle, but, but God's about to use what you already have. Third verse said, then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. That, that, that's a key verse there. I, I, I'm screaming it because I need you to get that because he tells her to go borrow, but don't borrow a few. You got to get that in your Holy Ghost spirit. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Fifth verse. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Sixth verse. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to the people that brought her the vessels that she said to the people who brought her the vessels, bring me some more. They said, there ain't no more. And the oil stopped. I want to use as my subject here today, who are you relying on? Who, who, who are you relying on? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare and decree even now that you would decrease Troy Gray, but increase me through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that it not be me speaking, but you speaking in and through me. We declare it, we decree it, it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Look at your name, I need somebody that's got faith in my corner. Mm -hmm. You may be seated in the presence of God. I was thinking what I might be able to share in this moment, and the word of God came to me about something that happened in my life 20 years ago. I discovered that in my life, my faith journey ought to increase every year. In fact, the level of faith that I have now, in January, it should have been stronger now than it was then. In fact, every day of my life, my faith needs to increase. Uh, I'm going to say that again. So if you still have the same level of faith today that you had three years ago, you're not growing. Because your faith walk in God ought to increase every day. That that's why many of us go through circumstances and trials because you think that those trials and circumstances are meant to take you out. But God is using those circumstances and those trials to strengthen your faith. So I've discovered something that, that in the midst of my moment, because God had already anointed me for this moment, that when my next trial, my next tribulation, my next struggle comes, I know that there's something on the inside of me that God is using to increase my faith. So even in my flesh, when I don't understand it or when I don't even like it or when I don't know why I'm going through what I go through, I still know that on the inside, God is growing me in the middle of my pain. So now I've learned how to discover that even in the middle of my pain, I'm still going to rejoice and thank him because I understand when I get through this, I'm going to live. Oh, okay, so, so, so one of the things that, that God has done for me 20 years ago, I'll never forget it, and many of you have seen the video when I was at World Harvest when my life trans trans shifted, but, but, but the preacher said something. His name was Prophet Shambach. He said, listen, the bank is going to owe you money, and you're going to build the church debt-free. Now, now hear that. Listen, that, that's what they told me in 2002. I was a pastor and had been pastoring for 10 years, but I did not have the capacity to believe that was even possible. I was a pastor preaching faith, 
But a man that had more faith than me told me that we would build this church debt free and the bank would owe me money and I did not have the capacity to believe it. And so because I did not believe what he said, it did not happen. Because my faith was not at the level of his faith. So when he said something that seemed so crazy to me, instead of believing it was possible, I discounted it. Because in 2002, I was walking in the level of my faith of where I was then. Are you following me so far? So all of us in the room have a different level of faith that we have in our life. And sometimes we're not understanding why we see other people that seem to have extreme levels and ours doesn't seem to be quite there yet because we still find ourselves questioning things that we ought not be questioning. Okay, y'all looking at me kind of strange. I've discovered that sometime that, that in the middle of my moment, I doubt. Is there anybody in here that find yourself doubting? And I'm asking myself, God, why after everything that you have done for me, after all the things that you have brought me through, why am I allowing this moment that I'm facing right now to cause me to doubt? He said, your spirit is willing but your flesh is weak. So he said, what you got to start doing is feeding your faith and starving your doubt. Look, look at your neighbor and say, feed your faith and starve your doubt. Well, I'm glad you said that, brother pastor, because the only way that you can feed your faith is you got to get next to some people that know how to walk with you. That, that when you feed your faith, you got to be able to be around other champions that let you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I've got to be around some people that will allow me to know that God is right there by my side. I need some people that does a Psalm chapter number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but in his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night that he might be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water I need some friends in my life that say pastor have you been in the word pastor have you worshiped and spent time with God I need some people in my life that will build my faith and start of my doubt, say yeah. So, so, so now we're in a scenario, Justin, where there is a woman that now is a widow woman. In the text, she's a widow woman and she has no money. But the scripture says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets of Elijah saying, my husband is dead. And I don't know how I'm going to do this thing. The people are coming to take my sons and make them slaves. I have no money, nothing that could fix it. She's crying. She's grieving. She's about to lose her sons because she has no money. But she qualifies it by saying, to Elisha, you know my servant, my husband is dead. You knew he feared the Lord. But look, look what she's saying. She's, she's saying to him, you, you fear the Lord. My, my husband feared the Lord. And what, what, what she's in essence saying is, listen, I don't have the faith on my own account. But, but my husband served you. My husband was faithful. And so I need a miracle not based upon where I am. I need a miracle right now based on my husband's faith. Now, I'm going to pause there for a moment because but here's the thing that all of you need to say, that, that it's worth you living a good life and doing the right thing. Because do you understand that there are people whose lives are tied up to your faith? Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that again. You're looking at me kind of strange. That, that there's some people in your life that are never going to get it till you get it. 
Okay, I'm going to say it to this section. That, that there's some people in your life that you don't even know it, but they're watching the way that you walk. And the way that you walk are going to lead them either to the cross or from the cross. And so what she is saying in this text is, listen, I don't have the kind of faith that my husband had, but my husband feared God. And because he feared God, I need you to give me some favor because I ain't got the faith. I'm about to lose my children. I ain't got no money. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But my husband had faith. My I think so, so now that, that tells me something, Brother Fred, that, that tells me something. It, it tells me that, that if I walk right and I'm faithful to God, then my children and those connected to me can get blessings because of me. Oh, y'all looking at me kind of strange. She's not basing it on her faith. She says, my husband feared the Lord, and because he feared the Lord, I need you to do something for me. I, I got to qualify it. Is there anybody in the room that you've got some people that you're praying for, but ain't got saved yet? Do you recognize and understand that your faith and your walk with God can cause miracles and changes in their life? Oh, there ought to have been a better shout than that. Yeah. Troy Gray knows he's standing on the ground of Reverend H.M. Wingo that pastored here 44 years before me. My granddaddy. I'm feasting off of some of his anointing. That when I get up here, it ain't just Troy Gray, but I've got some DNA of Harold Wingo for 44 years and some DNA of Reverend C.A. Jones, my great-grandfather, for 35 years before him. That when I get up in here, I'm walking on three generations of power, of joy, of strength. I'm walking in the DNA. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what she is saying is, listen, I ain't got no faith. <laughs> I'm crying, I'm grieving, I'm messed up, and they about to come and get my boys and put them in slavery. That, that, that's a predicament. She's like, I don't know what to do. Here, here, here's, here's where you got to be careful. That's why I brought what I brought up earlier. Schombach in 2002 said, Gray... The bank is going to owe you money, and you're going to build the church debt-free. That, that, that's big faith, right? But in 2002, I was only 10 years old in my faith. That, that seemed awful mammoth to me to believe that that was even possible, so I discounted it. I canceled my own miracle because I failed to believe that that was possible. I'm going somewhere. In this season, you cannot afford to hang around people that are doom and gloom and speak death over their life. In this next season, your miracle cannot be something that you can contain. Okay, I'm going to say it again. In this season, the thing that you want God to do has to be so big that the only way it's going to even happen is that you've got to trust God. Okay, y'all, I, I got to stay here a little long. Y'all must have went out last night. L listen, this section, God is trying to push you into a place that is so deep in God that the only way you're going to get your next miracle is that you've got to trust him when you can't trace him. In this next move of God, you do not want something that you in yourself can get. In this next season, you got to have something so major that you know it's only the hands of God that does it. And when he does do it, you will say it was nothing but God that did this thing. But, but, but here's the thing. He said, get this. He says, what do you need? Then she started getting doom and gloom, Jamie. She's like, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing in my house. So what do you got? Said, oh, God, there's a little bit of a bowl, a little bit of vessel. I ain't got that. He said, take it and go to your neighbors 
and get everything that you can get. Don't go for a few. Get everything. Or did you hear the instruction? You know what she had the audacity to do? He told her to do that. And she had the audacity. Come here, Fred. Come here, Arnie. Come here, Jeremy. Come here, Anthony. Just stand up. Listen, I'm trying to help you. The Lord, through Elisha, gave the instruction to her, go borrow vessels, don't get a few, and do what you got to do, right? That's, that's, that's what the vessel was. She's like, well, let me give it to my sons. I need y'all to go out to the neighbor's houses. I need you to go get the vessels and, and get my stuff for me. That, that, that there, ladies and gentlemen, was the mistake. Because her sons don't have the level of faith that she has. Her sons didn't even know that they were about to be bought into slavery. Her sons did not even know the grief that their mother was even experiencing. So the pain that was on the mother is deeper than anything that they knew about. So their level of tenacity of getting something was not as fervent as hers was because she understood that if nothing happened, their boys were going to go into slavery. So, so what does she do? She, she gives it to them. And here's what they do. They go based upon the level of their faith. They, they, they're not going on her level. They're going on their level. So they only went out to get enough that they thought was enough. Some of you have not received the miracle that God wants to give you is because your blessing was their blessing, not your blessing. Okay, you, you're missing me. So the word of God said that she told them to go out and get the stuff. And when they came back, she didn't know exactly what they had. She said, when they come back, I need you to get into a room and shut the door from your sons and from your family and just take the bowls and start pouring. So they started giving, give me your bowls, Jeremy. Just, just grab me something. Next. Again, it's their level. It's not her level. It's their level of faith. Each one came and she's waiting to go get more. And it stopped. Their level of faith stopped. She looked because she thought there was going to be more. Her level was, I expect more. Their level was, I gave you everything I had. I'm still waiting for more, but there's no more because my sons only gave me to the level of their faith, of their ability, which did not match what I was expecting. I'm expecting more, but I didn't get the more because all they gave me is what they had. And what I need you to understand is that in this life, there are different types of people. There are gallon people and there are pint people. And if you are a pint person, you are only going to give me all that you've got. But because I'm a gallon person, I'm expecting more from you and you never fulfill me. You're giving me all you got, but I'm a gallon and I need more. I need to hang out with some gallon people so they can fill me up. That can give me what I need. I need some gallon people that have crazy faith, that believe there's nothing too hard for God. I need some gallon people. It, it's not that, that Jeremy was wrong. He just now giving me what he thought he could have. It's not that he was wrong. He just gave me the level where he was. It wasn't that he was wrong. It's just that he gave me what he had. It's not that he's wrong. It's just this is the level of my faith. Right. And so because it was the level of my faith, it didn't meet what I wanted. So, so now I got to trust God that in this new season that I connect myself with crazy faith kind of people. I need the kind of people that believe there is nothing too hard for him. I need the people 
that when they wake up, the devil gets mad and says, dang, they up. And the only way that I'm going to be able to increase my faith is that I've got to be in the word. I've got to guard my heart. I've got to guard my spirit. I've got to learn how to block out anything that's unclean. I've got to walk in the newness of God. I've got to find the levels of my life where the enemy tries to beat me, and I let the enemy know that what you're trying to do to break me, it's not going to work. And so they gave the oil. And what ends up happening, even in the midst of it not being what it could have been, it still was enough to do what needed to be done. <laughs> Everything you need to fulfill the purpose that God has given you, you already have access to it. You guys may be seated. <laughs> you have access to it. Church, you, you got to believe you have access to it. You, you, you need healing? Stand up. You, you need a miracle? Stand up. Okay, okay, pull up, come up, come up. Never sit on the front three rows. Because here's what you got to get. And I'm about to close this. I, I say it all the time. But some of y'all ain't getting this. And if you get this, you're going to be victorious. You will win the battle. If you get what I'm about to tell you, you're going to win the battle because the faith can move mountains. Look at your neighbor and say, faith can move mountains. No, I need you to tell somebody, really, faith can move mountains. No, no, I need you to open up your mouth and I need you to declare and decree. My faith is about to move my mountain. No, I, I, uh, 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 uh. I need some radical people in this church right now that are going to say, my faith is going to move my mountain. I, I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. I, I'm staying right here. I need some people that got some mountains in your life and you need God to move your mountain. Well, your victory is in your tongue. Your victory is in your mouth. Your victory is in your praise. Your victory, y'all ain't looking. Ha, 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 ha. No, 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 no. The power of death and life is in my tongue. Through my words can change everything. One word from God and earth was created. Let there be light. And there was light. When he spoke it, it became being. And if Christ is inside of me. Uh oh. Oh, oh sucky sucky now. Hey, if Christ is in me, then when I speak, I bring God out of me. And when I speak, it's not Troy Gray speaking, but the Spirit of Christ through Troy Gray. Whoa! Look at your neighbor and say, you're sitting by a blessed somebody right now. Oh, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed. Oh, come on, come on. I need you to get by somebody. Say, I may not look blessed, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. I'm blessed when they're talking about me. I'm blessed. Where's 250 blessed people right now? I need all the blessed people right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, look where he's brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light look where he brought me from look where he brought me from <laughs> look where he brought me from i used to be an alcoholic i used to be a drug addict i used to be a hoe i used to be this and that but by the grace of god i'm not what i used to be i'm not what i'm gonna be but thank God, I'm here right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look where he brought me through. Look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness. 
The devil thought he had me, but Jesus said, you are mine. The enemy thought he had you. Oh, somebody ought to praise right there. You should have been dead. You could have been dead. But by the grace of God. Look at your neighbor and say, now. Now means I made it through hell and high water, and I'm still here. Now means what the enemy meant for evil, God's about to turn into good. Now means I'm the head, and I'm not the tail. Now means bring it on, devil, because God's got me, and if God be for me, it's more than the world is against me. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, Oh, neighbor, whoo, Jesus, if you only knew what I've been through, you would be praising too. You, you see, y'all be shouting too late. I got a group of people that the only reason you gonna shout is after he does what you're praying for him to do. That ain't praising in faith. That's praising in the manifestation of the miracle that you already got. But God's trying to find out, will you praise me when you can't trust me? Will you praise me when hell's coming against you? Will you praise me when folks are talking about you? Will you praise me when your kids are about to go into slavery? Will you praise me when you have no money, no nothing, but all you got is the hand of God? So, so, so the text says her oil was full by what her brothers and them, her children then brought to her. She said, listen, go take this stuff, sell it, and you and your family are going to have everything that you need for the rest of your life. Okay. Here, here's the part that you got to get. Her miracle was based on her husband's faith. That, that's why it pays for you to be faithful and submit to the will of God. Because even when you leave, there's residue still on your life that will affect generations to come after that. But, but I need people in the church that are willing to believe that you have the faith. See, that, that, that's, what, that's, uh, that's my assignment for the next two minutes. I, I've got to qualify the fact that you've got the faith. And, and, and what, what you need to understand is, according to the scriptures, that when anyone in this room truly got saved not, not, not guilty conscience true repentance because true repentance is I'm not going to do it again I feel guilty and ask to say I'm sorry I'm just sorry that I got caught but true repentance causes miracles to happen in your life and he says that when you come to me and you give me my heart your heart I take all your baggage, I take all your stuff, I take all the things that have been trying to kill you, and I throw it in the sea of forgetfulness never to remember them again. Okay? But, but here's the part that I love, and I say it all the time because you got to get this in your Holy Ghost spirit, that when he takes all of your baggage and he takes all of your stuff, Preston, he gives you a measure of faith. 
So, so now I take all of your mess and you, and I give you a measure of faith. What, what you fail to understand is I've already qualified you for every storm. I've already qualified you for every trial. I've already qualified you from everything the devil's going to do is because number one, before you was even born, I fixed it. And so now I'm watching you out of your Marie Clay experiences and you're coming forward and giving me your heart and I'm giving you a measure of faith. Now, now what you choose to do with that measure of faith is your business. See, what I do with what he gives me is what causes what I have to strengthen. Some of you have been given a measure of faith and you put it in your pocket and you ain't watered it one bit. And you wonder why you ain't going nowhere. See, there is a difference, praise team, there's a difference between a, being a talented singer and an anointed singer. There's a difference between an articulate pastor and an anointed pastor. Because your giftedness and your talents is not going to break any yokes. It's the anointing that you have through the crushing of your life that causes you to be able to deal with the stuff that you go through. And that's what brings the anointing in your life. Had it not been for the pain in your life, you would never be able to have the oil that's coming from your crushing. Courtney, the Lord knew you were going to go through what you were going through because he knew at this season of your life, you have everything that you need to bring it out. You've gone through grief lately. You've gone through pain lately. You've gone through broken relationships lately. You've gone through financial issues lately. You've got nesting of the daughter leaving the house. You are in a season where if you don't continue to use what you've got, the enemy will try to make you think that serving God doesn't pay off. But I come here today to tell you that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come against every scheme, every strategy of the enemy that's trying to break any of us because this joy we have, the world did not give it and the world cannot take it away. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but hold on. Come on, I need you to look, I need you to prophesy to your neighbor. Say, hold on, help is on the way. Hold on, he's a way maker. Hold on, he's a bridge over troubled water. Hold on, he'll wipe the tears from your eyes. Hold on, he'll be your burden bearer. Hold on, he'll be your heavy load sharer. Hold on, everything you need, he's going to supply. Hold on, your not yet is better than your right now. Hold on, victory is yours. Hold on. The Lord is your light. Hold on and your salvation. Hold on. The Lord is the strength of your life. Hold on. For whom shall you be afraid? Hold on. When the wicked, even your enemies, came to eat up your flesh, they stumbled and fell. Hold on. Help is on the way. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you hold on yes he will hold on he's got help along the way hold on i'll look to the hills from which cometh my help my help comes from the lord hold on yes lord hold on yes lord yes to your will Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. For God shall wipe away the tears from your eyes. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more 
persecution, no more strife. This joy I had, the world didn't give it, and the world cannot take it away. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. I will supply all your needs. I will supply all your needs. Look at your name, everything you need is in the house. Now, I think y'all missed it. Everything you need to fulfill what God has in your life, it's already in the house. What she said, I ain't got nothing. All I got is oil. I'll take what you got. I, I think you missed that. She said, I ain't got nothing but a pot of oil. He said, I can use that. Whatever you have, he can use it for the glory. And so now in this season, it's critical. It's critical that you connect yourself with mountain believing faith kind of people. So to believe there is nothing too hard for God. What do you need? That's my question to you. What do you need? What, what do you need? That, that, that's the question I'm supposed to ask. What do you need? Because I am the great I am. Amen, amen. So whatever you need, I am. I am the great I am. So whatever you need me to be, that's what I am. All you got is oil. I'll make your oil what you need. <laughs> I'll turn your pain and turn it into purpose. I'll take your loss and turn it into gain. Hey, here's the kind of crazy, radical faith that y'all need to have. And then come here, and then, and then. Crazy ended. I just love it. I've been seeing him all week in my spirit. Come, come, come stand up here. Just, just come up here. And Andon sang in the praise team last week. Yeah, he did. Do, do y'all remember? And I know many of you left going, boy, that was one wild white boy. I mean, he had some radical praise. Yeah. He was jumping and a hollering and praising and rejoicing and shouting. And he caused everybody in the church to go nuts. Yeah. Because here, here's why. Here, here's why. It wasn't a performance. Well. Yeah. It was his heart is matching his praise. And because his heart is matching his praise, it had an effect on everybody in the whole, not just him, but everybody that was in the presence of him. Everybody was getting some of that juice that he had on the inside of him because it was an anointing that God was using in him that caused all of us to get excited about the glory of Jesus Christ. So when you have the anointing of God and you have the power of God and you have the willingness of God, God will make a way out of no way say yeah and and as I close 
I feel sorry for some of you who've been in here the whole two hours and you ain't opened your mouth once. I feel sorry for those of you who have sat here like a bump on a log, like God ain't never done nothing for you. I don't get it. Because the word said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, now sometimes you got to understand what I'm saying because and I, I'm done in the sermon part. I'm, I'm going now just I'm going to go meddling. Um, God, God has a way of helping me because I'm going to be honest. You can go, thank you for watching. If you need to be saved, I ask that you would just write down, I want to be a part of the army of Jesus Christ. We'll be praying for you that God would bless you and that God would give you the strength. Thank you for watching our worship experience today. I pray the peace of God and his favor be over you all the days of your life. God bless you and see you next Sunday.